Is that better? Good work, me. Hello, my name is Andrew Morgan Smith, and I wanted to talk to you today about how to get work. And if I had a nickel for every time I was asked that question, um... First of all, something to understand is composers are not usually going to get you work unless you're doing a support role for them. So people you do want to get in touch with, producers, directors, maybe editors, music supervisors, people who actually are making things and are looking for a composer. Something else to keep in mind, these filmmakers usually don't care whether you have a college degree or you don't have a college degree or what your educational background is. What they care about is first your demo. Are you doing the genre of music they like? Do they like the sound of your music? That's an important thing. That's the emotion of their movie is gonna ride on whether or not your music is what they want. Two, have you done it before? Okay, maybe you've scored a commercial, but can you score a feature film? Or you've scored an indie horror movie that was made for $30,000, but can you do a TV movie that needs to be turned around in three weeks and is $250,000 or $2 million. Another important thing is, are you a person that they're gonna be able to get along with? Do they feel like you're a person who can collaborate with them and fulfill their vision? Because at the end of the day, we are fulfilling their vision. And something else to think about if you're just starting out, this is all a risk assessment to a filmmaker. So if you are a green composer, you've never worked on a project before, your filmmaker is risking a lot by hiring you, spending their money on you, and putting their hope and faith in you that you're gonna deliver something to them. So, and you win the world. Parker Brothers kind of fun. There's not really just one break. It's not something where, oh, I've gotten my first TV movie and now I can score Star Wars. It is a series of work of, okay, you've done a $1 million movie, now a $2 million movie, now a $10 million movie. And each one of those levels is very hard to get through. It's very rare that anybody just gets picked up on YouTube and gets hired to score a $10 million movie. So what are the ways that you can start getting onto projects? The first thing is traditional networking. That's going to events, premieres, festivals, basically going to things where other people with the same kind of goals of making movies, making film, making commercials are gonna be there and then you can get in with them and see what maybe they're doing next. Another way you could meet people is at personal events. So something like if you're interested in photography and you live in a major city and you go out to a photography meetup and you just are fun to hang out with and you're just talking to other people, finding out what's going on, especially if you're in a major city or in Los Angeles, chances are there's gonna be some filmmakers in those meetings. Now, if you're not in uh, a major city or in LA, then that does become harder, but having a, a shared interest, whether it's filmmaking or photography, is another place you could build a relationship with somebody that's not necessarily so straightforward networking stuff like a film festival would be. <laughs> I like Ron. Another way to do this is cold outreach. Let's take some ice. And what I mean by that is like sending emails, doing phone calls to production companies, directors, producers. The internet's a great thing. You can find email addresses for producers, directors, actors, editors, pretty easily through IMDb or through Facebook, but that's all a numbers game. You send out a hundred emails, maybe three emails respond, and maybe one of those things becomes a real, a real job. Of all the stuff I've ever done that way, only a handful have been really successful at getting me work. I've literally only gotten maybe five projects out of everything I've done from cold outreach. A friend of a friend who needs somebody or an editor or a producer who just happens to know you is a much bigger boon to you than, hey, I'm a random person. Think outside the box. What's in the box? Get your music to editors and, and music supervisors and let them use your music as temp music, which is like the temp music that goes in the edits. And maybe the director or producer really likes the music that's in the edit. Do outreach to film animation programs and colleges. They're gonna need composers to do their student films. And these are the people that you wanna grow with. Doing these favor projects for filmmakers can be a really powerful thing, especially just starting out. You wanna get that ball rolling where 
you've helped out this director and they can recommend you to somebody else and maybe they're working on a commercial and then they're gonna hire you on something else. I have had those experiences where I've worked with a filmmaker on a student film or a music video years ago, all of a sudden come up and say, hey, I'm working on this thing. It'd be really awesome if I could bring you on board. And the last ultimate cliche of all of this is, is that there is no one way to get work. And also there's no one path to get through this job. There's no one path that says, oh, well, Andrew started scoring football videos and that's how I'm gonna do it. You just never know what the direction is. You just have to kind of carve your own path. And I know I hated that sentiment because whenever you're starting out, that feels like a, that feels like, well, what am I supposed to do? And the answer is there's a ton of stuff you can do. Just start writing, start reaching out to people, get moving on stuff. Obviously some of these things you can't do in quarantine, which we're all quarantined right now. So hopefully if you're watching this anytime in the next three months, we you won't go to events right now. But in the meantime, keep writing music, write something every day. I know you can, you can do it. So, uh, talk to you later.